In this video, we're gonna be talking about Coulomb's law with multiple charges. So we're gonna have a one dimensional problem with three charges that are in a row and how to find the net force acting on a single charge. And then we're also gonna do a more complex version with charges in two dimensions with forces that are on angles. So for um, these types of problems, I assume that you're already okay with a, a straight plug-in type problem to find the electrostatic repulsion or attraction by putting in the K value, the two charges, and then the separation distance squared. Okay, one of the keys to doing these types of things is making sure you plug it into the calculator correctly. So you wanna make sure you put all of these numbers that are in scientific notation in very carefully and then always wrap them in parentheses so that your calculator is aware that that's one really large number or really small number. So if we're taking a look at a problem like this and you're asked, what is the net force on Q2? Um, chances are you're gonna get the values for Q1, Q2, and Q3 um, with some separation distances. Okay, so for this first part of the video, I'm just gonna talk about conceptually what you would do. And then when I do the more complex version over here, I'll actually um, plug in all the number values and then work that out a little bit more thoroughly. So for this particular one, let's pretend that our Q2 has a positive charge. Let's pretend that our Q3 has a negative charge. And then let's say our Q1 has a positive charge as well. Okay, what you would do in this case is you would figure out the force between just Q1 and Q2 using Coulomb's law. And we know that's gonna be a force of repulsion because they're both positive. So then this force would be pushing towards the right. So that we'll just call that force of Q1 on Q2. Okay, and then for the force of Q3 on Q2, same thing, you would plug it into Coulomb's law with a K value, the Q, the two Q values, and then you're also gonna put in the new separation distance. And because these are opposite charges and it's a force of attraction, this one is also gonna cause a force to the right. So this is the force from Q3. Okay, so essentially all you're really gonna do is you're gonna do Coulomb's law twice and then you're gonna add them together. Okay, for other scenarios, you may subtract them. So say for example, this force over here was negative and then you still had the positive, excuse me, um, negative charge and then you have a positive charge in the middle and then you had a negative charge over here. Both of them are going to attract this charge that's in the middle. So they're basically both trying to attract it and they're tugging it in two different directions. In that case, you would just subtract the two forces for your net force. And then obviously whichever one has the greater force, the object is going to get pulled and accelerate into that particular direction. Okay, so that's how you solve a Coulomb's law problem with multiple charges in one dimension. So getting to the second part over here, it's much more complex. So the problem I'm gonna solve is basically, what is the net force on Q1? Okay, so what I'm gonna do for that is I have some numbers for me. I have the two meter separation distance between Q1 and Q2, and then between Q2 and Q3, and then I have a couple different charges here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure I find the force between them and plug in the proper charges for my Q1 and Q2, and then the correct separation distance as well.
All right, so I finished solving for the amount of force um, that Q2 applies on Q1 and how much Q3 applies on Q1 as well. This one was a little bit more simple because I already have the separation distance of two. And then I do have a positive and a negative number here. So technically the force comes out to be negative. Um, all I'm really telling myself is that I know this is negative and this is positive. Therefore, Q1 is going to be attracted towards Q2. Okay. Other than that, I don't really care too much about plugging the negative in there. You could or could not add that negative in there. For this second problem, we have our two Q values. We have 8 times 10 to the negative fifth, and we have 7 times 10 to the negative fifth. But we don't actually have our separation distance um, given to us directly. But this is 2 meters away, and this is 2 meters away. So it's basically two parts of a triangle. And then this would sort of be like the hypotenuse. So you could use Pythagorean theorem. Um, you could say that this is a isosceles triangle or a, where there's two 45 degree angles. So this should be two root two, um, whichever way you want to go with it. Two root two probably would have been a little bit more exact, but I just went with 2.83. Okay, so I have 2.83 meters as my separation distance because that's the hypotenuse of this triangle. Okay, so that was actually the easy part of this problem. Um, and then it gets actually a little bit more complex from there. So now that we have all of our numbers, we have Q2 acting on Q1. And what it does is it pulls it down. Okay, I know it pulls it down because this is positive and this is negative, And then opposites attract. So it's pulling it down with 7.88 newtons of force. Okay, and this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. And then between Q1 and Q3, these are both positive numbers. So I know it's going to be a force of repulsion. So it's going to push it away. And we know that the force it's pushing away is 6.29 newtons. Okay, now just as, you, as you've done probably before with velocities or other different forces, anytime you have something on an angle, you have to break it up into components so that you have a directly horizontal component and a directly vertical component. So this one is actually going to be no different. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 6.29 newtons and use it as my hypotenuse. And I'm going to create a horizontal and vertical component. Okay, this angle over here is going to be 45 degrees. Um, and then if I use sine and cosine, we can find our different components of the triangle. So I'm going to use sine to find this opposite end. I'm going to use cosine to find the adjacent end. And I've already worked that out a little bit earlier. And because it's a 45 degree angle, um, it works out sort of nicely because both of these values are going to end up being the same. All right, so now my focus is just taking a look at all of my components that are perfectly horizontal and perfectly vertical from one another. So what I'm going to do is I have two vertical components. I have 4.45 newtons up and 7.88 newtons down. So I'm going to subtract those because those are in opposite directions. And then that's going to leave me with 3.43 newtons downward. Okay, so again, I have 4.45 newtons up and then 7.88 down. They're in exact opposite directions, so I'm going to subtract them and I have an additional 3.43 newtons down. Okay, we have no horizontal forces besides this 4.45 newtons. So I'm going to use my tip to tail method, add my vectors, and I still have this 4.45 newtons over here. Okay, so for my final answer, actually what I'm going to do is take the resultant 
of those final components. Okay, I can use Pythagorean theorem one more time. A squared plus B squared equals C squared, or I could use a trig function if I'd like, and it's gonna come out to 5.62 Newtons. Okay, and that's gonna be my final, final answer. Okay, if you wanted to solve for the angle at which it's pointing, if you wanna solve um, for this theta right here, um, you can use an inverse trig function. So say for example, if you use the um, inverse of tangent, okay, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Okay, pop that in my calculator and then theta comes out to 52.38 degrees. Okay, so there is a lot of work on the screen here. Um, so let me just sum it up and then um, walk through the steps one more time. Okay, so basically what you wanna do is your first step is always to start out with Coulomb's Law. Just find the force between the two charges that you're currently looking at. So you, it, there's a Q1 and a Q2 because you're only gonna analyze two charges at a time. So it might be these two first, it might be these two first, um, but you only analyze two at a time. Okay, you make sure you plug in the proper Q values, make sure you're taking a look at the correct separation distance, plug it in carefully with a lot of parentheses as shown over here, and then you have your forces. Once you get your forces, you're gonna add or subtract them based on the way that they're pointing. So the, the, the key is to make sure you draw a lot of pictures, to draw all your vectors, so you can see which way they're pointing. You can clearly see this one is going up and this one's going down, so it would totally make sense to subtract them. And we have that additional force going downwards. And we were still left with that horizontal piece over here, 4.45 Newtons to the side. Okay, so the result would be as this is pulled downward pretty strongly, and pushed over diagonally um, with a little bit less force, it's gonna cause the charge to go down and to the left at a 52.38 degree angle with 5.62 Newtons of force. Thank you for watching and listening. Mm -hmm.